Humans are naturally sadistic beings. I mean, think about it. Would you want to read a book where everything went right for the hero? Where he defeated the villain instantly without a hitch and got the girl of his dreams with no trouble at all? That sounds boring. Exactly. Now, what if he gets captured by the villain, and if he doesn't escape in time, his one true love will die? Much better. To write an interesting book, you have to torture your characters. Dooley Wright said, put your character in a tree, then throw rocks at him, then throw bigger rocks at him, then let tree naiads poke him, then set the tree on fire, then you can get him out. That sounds like fun. But it takes more than torturing a character. Your readers have to love them first, and so do you. But I can't torture someone I love. Psh, what kind of writer are you? It's true that torturing lovable characters is part of the writer's job. I mean, think about it. If you took an obnoxious and whiny character that nobody liked and stuck him in a burning tree, your readers would just laugh, which goes back to them being sadistic creatures. If, on the other hand, you took a sweet-natured, selfless, and heroic character and set his tree on fire, your readers will be on the edge of their seats, hoping and praying he'll make it out all right. Here is an example of this. This should be good. If you begin your story with a woman being informed that her husband has died, your readers will, of course, feel some sympathy for her, but they will not be invested. They do not know this woman or her husband. For all they know, the widow does not even deserve their sympathy. When they see her cry, they will think it is sad, but they will not truly care. If, however, you begin with this woman and her husband going through their usual morning routine, her making him breakfast, him teasing her lovingly, her swatting him with a spatula, we will begin to care for these characters. We will see that the woman truly loves her husband, and when we hear that he has died, we will feel true sorrow for his widow. Think of it this way. If a complete stranger's husband died, you would feel sorry for her. But if your best friend's husband died, you would be heartbroken. Assuming he was a good husband. That is true. The system of getting to know a character before doing things to them works with other emotions as well. If you have made us love your heroine, if she's sweet and kind, and we see her husband abuse her, showing their everyday routine by him shouting at her and hitting her when she doesn't move fast enough for him, then when we hear that he dies, we will share his widow's sense of profound relief, mingled perhaps with a touch of guilt about being happy over someone's death. So it's about making your readers feel something. That's the point of writing, isn't it? To invoke emotions in your readers, you have to make characters they care about and are invested in. Make sympathetic, likable characters. But not perfect characters. Nobody likes a perfect person. I mean, just look at editor. What is that supposed to mean? It's true. Your character should have a strong flaw, be it a short temper or a know-it-all attitude or a tendency to let people walk all over them. He should be lovable, but flawed. Lovable and flawed. Even if he's a total jerk, he has to at least mean well under it all. His flaws should be realistic and relatable. Your readers should be able to see a bit of themselves or people they know in your characters. Which will make it that much more traumatic when you've tortured them. Exactly. You need to build your characters before you break them. Make them realistic, relatable, and extremely lovable. Then throw everything in your arsenal at them. Kaboom! But I love my characters. I don't want to torture them. Just think, it will mean that much more when they win. If you didn't throw any major problems at your characters, then the ending wouldn't mean anything. But after the pain and bitterness of the climax, the joy and sweetness of the resolution are so much greater. Unless you're writing a tragedy. I love this conversation from the movie The Page Master. Do you have any idea what I've been through? Tell me. I was nearly torn to shreds by a crazy doctor, I was made a slave to a bunch of mangy pirates, and eaten, got that? Eaten by a fire-breathing dragon, not to mention being tossed, squashed, and scared practically to death. Yet you stand before me. Well, yeah. Think, boy. What kind of adventure would you have had if I had brought you here with the turn of a page? So make your character suffer. After all, it builds character. Today's novel idea, courtesy of Gail Carson Levine's book, Writing Magic, Creating Stories That Fly, is to write the story of Little Red Riding Hood from Little Red's point of view, and to really emphasize the pain and horror of being eaten by a wolf. Really make Red suffer. Thanks for watching, and happy torturing. I, I, I mean, writing.